this is uh, the largest class we have had in this particular class. So um, uh, it will be uh, interesting, challenging. Um, let me um, start with a very broad introduction of what we are planning to achieve in this class. Um, what, which company is the most uh, valuable company in the world?
question is, are you going to do that? Some of 
these things I'm going to be able to share with you because I worked in large companies and had commercial products from there. I did two startups. I started two companies. And the last one was in the dot com time, internet company, which quickly grew to 35 people with more than half of them, my former students working for my own company. And then it got acquired. And uh, we continue to develop the technologies right here in our work at Price State that are being commercialized or being licensed as we speak. So we work with our students. This summer, I worked at Microsoft Research, at IBM Research, two of them, at AT&T Labs, at uh, Oracle, at National Library of Medicine, and these kind of things, the real companies, at, at another startup, small companies, in healthcare space, in an emerging country. So these are the top corporations, like Bing Search, which you see. One of the student has worked there. Oracle, database product. One of the student worked at Oracle, and her code is becoming part of the commercial release, the next one. So we've done that. And so I'm going to use that experience in conducting this class. The other thing that I want to say is that it's going to be very participatory. And there are several aspects of the participatory and group orientedness of this project. This, this A, we have to come prepared for the class. Meaning I will not be covering or other people who actually do actually the teaching of this class itself will be a group teaching. I don't know anything. I'll be first to tell you that. There's so many things change. I may be teaching this class for the 10th time, and not a single time I have taught the same thing year after year, because we are dealing with worldwide web. Because worldwide web has changed drastically. Every, how many companies, did you know? How many of you use Facebook? Well, I'm, I'm just surprised that not all of you use Facebook. How many of you don't use any social media? Facebook, Twitter. Warning, you guys may not be prepared to take this class. Uh, I'll, you see the results. Uh, and if you want to be prepared, you'll have to quickly get on with that. Not that I'm going to use social media exclusively here or teach you about it. But the point is communication, interaction. All those things are, are going to be very important. Right, but unfortunately that doesn't work. Do you know that majority of the commercial software production is not done in a team that is on site? Things haven't improved much since uh, ICQ and IRC. not whether you like or not like. The issue is how the world works. The issue also is about how the economy works. The issue is also about the practical aspects of where the skills are. The issue is also about the cost. Right? So you take Apple, much of the design is done here, but none of the production is done in the United States. And you bet that there is a lot of video conference call happening between the designers and the uh, people who actually fabricate the products in China and other things. Right? So you have to learn that, you have to be part of that. I found about 25 schools right now. And the education system is only I can't do it with everything face to face. But I'm on my I am until almost 10 p.m. every day, and they can contact me anytime. So the things have to evolve. If you want to do the business in a modern way, you have to evolve. You have to learn. Coming back to the 
he might say, I don't know everything, that's one thing. Things <coughs> are changing, so I can't do everything. So that means I'm going to take the best qualified people to teach you some part of it. For example, the next class will be taught by Alan, who is actually, who was an undergraduate student until last quarter, until, until uh, spring, and he is now a PhD student. And uh, he has designed some of the most beautiful visualizations that we have, and I will show you the examples of that. So the front-end design part of it uh, just keeps on changing. I'll come to that very shortly. And he is the best, and not my, my other PhD students who work with me for three, four, five years don't know some of those programs. Because they do other things. So, we'll, so teaching will also be participating. You have to co comprehensively use the Google groups. That will be one of the mechanisms with which we will communicate and other inter, uh, electronic media to communicate. And you would have to talk to each other and you will have to participate in the class. So you should have read things that is given ahead of the time so that you can learn. So we will be giving more like guidance not teaching you how to do The other important things, as I made clear, is that you have to be on very comfortable programming before you know you'll be successful in this class. So we if you think you cannot if you can't do independent programming in Java, not even though uh, that, that that this we are not ready for that. So this class is really meant for senior students and others more advanced for that. Um, that doesn't mean you need to know the programming part that we are going to uh, you know, teach in this class. Right? It's just that you've got to be familiar with being able to see the code on the web, modify it to suit your purpose. Right? You ought to be able to go and look up the specification of HTML5 and pick up exactly what you want for your purpose. <coughs> Much of the knowledge is not in textbooks. Certainly not in the World Wide Web area. It's on the web. Right? Just today I was hearing NPR story. And the uh, trends, the data of trends at YouTube say the largest growth in the use of video has been in educational and training software. Part of online universities and online courses. Some of my students also take courses from online. In fact, I would have loved to make this course online also. Uh, I'm not yet there because again, every time I teach it's different and that would mean that if I do everything online, next time it is time to repeat it, it will be have changed and I won't be able to use everything. So but I will still record it and I may still have the recording of the class available to you for you to uh, go back and go back and look at it. But um, um, I thought uh, you know classes on the internet. So uh, 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 last thing, uh, four or five months ago I gave I gave several classes to four universities in India over the internet. Using Skype or Google Hangout or things of that nature video, slide share, all things like that. All right, so that, that's another important thing. And um, you have to take self-initiation, meaning you have to know. So class is not self-contained. It's open world, a lot of things will be on the web. And you have to know uh, when you don't know something and ask for it. It will be my responsibility to make sure that you get the help, that you've got to be prepared to I have read the stuff and then ask me the questions of what you did not understand. Rather than say, teach me the stuff. So these are the, some of the uh, background. So now let's get started with the um, uh, uh, technical aspects. So uh, you know this guy? Right. So, uh, who does not know this person? I really can't see the name from back here. Uh, the name is Tim Berners-Lee. 
You don't know the first name. So, Kevin, who is he? Would you please hi? You're using his work so much. Oh, he's the guy that made, <clears throat> well, from what I understood from the Wikipedia and what I've like there about him, he uh, developed HTML and how um, computer, there was like a protocol for computers to like communicate and like share data between each other. Is that right? Now, um, there was a required reading before you created this class. Kevin, did you do that? This won't have this, this won't work for you if you want to be in this class. I won't I can't emphasize us enough. You <coughs> have to read and come ready. It's a very fast paced class. A lot of things to learn. If you don't read it and you don't have time to do that, and you're busy with five courses, you won't be able to keep it. And it won't be fun. I want those going out from here. Here is actually my model. Uh, this has worked in the class, and I don't know whether it worked this time this way or not. This has worked in the class very well. Think about a photograph. When a photographer goes for a job, he or she would have a portfolio. Examples. My work. And that is the basis on which he or she will get a job. You know today how you get hired? By knowing the right people. Hmm? It's by knowing the right people. But that's very important. But that is just to get you interview. Then you won't get uh, hired. Just just knowing that doesn't mean that you get hired. That may be that you get interview or at least a call. Or at least your resume will get. That's what will help you. What do what do what do recruiters do, what what do people who employ? And I have employed a lot of people in the past, so I know how I how I think and how I work. What do they look at? So what is your portfolio if you are a computer scientist? Your GitHub, yes, but your most most may not have that. Yet, but your your project stuff that you have actually implemented, not that oh I know this this this. No good. Everybody can write that. How do I know how much you know that? Only if you actually can demonstrate. So you discuss your project three, four, five line description with a URL. If I'm hiring somebody for web design and web program, and if that person is not providing me all these things, what does that do? Unless I'm training that person to, to, to do that. All right, so the point here is that this is what is expected. That's why 50% is, um, uh, you know, half the class is for that. In fact, in reality, more than that. That's what you learn to program. That means I have very little time to get you with the preliminaries. Because you have to read those things. You have to have time to do these things. In substantial amount of time. I would say about three hours for every class of the class, at the minimum. And um, if you are doing programming, it will take whatever it is. The good things on the other hand is that those who do this, they really do it. They do it for their own good. They know that this is they're doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for the rain. So they hopefully I'll draw you into the projects and you'll be so excited and give all your time. You just like to do what you like to do. It's like you want to hang out with a friend you really know and very know very well and you enjoy the company. You spend the time, you don't care about no. You know, a lot of other things, you know, the same thing here. That's what I would like. Okay. So, you be prepared if you, you know, going to succeed in that. So, this is the guy who invented the World Wide Web. What year? I want to say 1990. is when he wrote the proposal to implement. I think the second version of proposal, 91. So 1994. 1994 is when the uh, Mozilla Corporation was. 1992. No, the so so actually the first implementation was in 19. They started in 1990 itself. 1991 had the very first thing. And the uh, what was the first browser called? 
What are the two main things about World Wide Web? So, by the way, I'm, the, the thing, everything I'm, I'm saying is here. In that link. So, everything is here, right? Yeah. It's all there. And, and more. So, what are the two main things? The, uh, you know, at, at least at the start, what are the two things that made a World Wide Web when it was started? <coughs> Make multiple computers together with one main things. Right, but uh, in, the, in terms of technologies, what are the two technologies called? Oh. Uh, no. Uh, no, TCP IP is the part of the internet. You know, IP, part of that called IP was very critical for the World Wide Web to come, you know, and it's based on that. But the World Wide Web itself has two core components to start with. HTTP, you No, know, the other is HTML. What is HTML? HTML is how we describe content. All right, the rules of how things are set. Communication is HTTP, yeah. right? Yeah. So you have a command called get, yeah. post, right? So. HTML is yeah. structure of the document. Yeah. Are you, uh, it was derived from HTML. It was a subset of HTML. So earlier days before the web, uh, HTML uh, was structured something markup language was developed for structuring the book. Because you want to go to How can you describe the structure of, you know, electronically describe the structure of a document like a book? That was, and not necessarily how you put it online, was as GML. The interoperable data format for documents. Because you want to and when you want to end, end into a subset of that, for putting such data on the web became HTML. And HTML, what does what does H stand for? Hypertext. So I, hypertext existed long before uh, uh, 1990, long before Tim Berners Lee started even thinking about it. Right? Doug Ingleberg. And so hypertext concept was that you have a file and the file can refer to another file and contain within another file. Okay? Linking between the documents. That link was hypertext. Text hyper going outside of the document. But it all was on the same computer environment, computing environment, before the web. Why do Tim think about, I was, by the way, at CERN, uh, I know Tim, but uh, you may or may not know, but Wright State University, and represented by our center, Noesis, is an official member of World Wide Web Consortium. What is World Wide Web Consortium? Define the standards. That defines all the standards. So the new versions, the latest for HTML is HTML5. This comes from a community activity led by the members of WC and we are official member. Not only that, our work has actually become a worldwide web standard. It's called SA Visitor. Visitor is for web services. SA Visitor is semantic annotation of web services. That came from the work we started is actually worldwide standard from worldwide web. By the way, here's an interesting thing. You have to know worldwide web, right? Do you know where uh, right says stands in worldwide web? <coughs> so 
you so you have the right to become the you know to get the best education in one wide web if you want it. No. We are the smallest of the all players in top 25. And these guys are much larger than us. But this is the impact, the effect of world. And that's in 2006, there was zero worldwide productivity in this university. When I moved here with 10 of my PhD students in 2007, started Noise Center. All the work in worldwide web practically is in Noise Center. You guys know noises? So this is um, probably the largest group in so-called semantic web in the United States in academia. And our schools are among the most deep, you know, in demand schools. The last one to graduate this week joined IBM PJ Watson Business Center. My masters, two last masters to graduate started at the salaries of 110, 120 k first year. So compared with the average starting salary and they were in the best corporations in the world or IBM. So you, you have the right or environment to do that, but let's come back to our worldwide web discussion. So, um, I want to sort of quickly go through a couple of some, some of the important things, and you, if you're not at this, <coughs> I can read over. Um, one very important thing. So, so, so uh, in hyper HTML, you know, structure. So, things. What do you? What kind of things you say in the structure? You can say, what is the title of a document? Say things like that. There is a tag. So the fundamental thing is you have a tag and a value. And tag has a unique interpretation for rendering or displaying the data. H1 is heading one, big heading. S2 is smaller heading. P and the syntax uses angular bracket. P, paragraph slash P. A H ref. Explain. Right. So what happens is you say A H ref, end of thing, and then you say text, and then you slash backslash H A H ref, and that text is linked with underlying and blue link. And uh, what do you put in that link other than the uh, call out, which is the text? Which is underlined behind the text? What is that? The link itself. That link is URI. By the way, here is a homework. Come prepared to tell in the next class what is the difference between URI and URL. So we want everybody to catch up. With, uh, you know, right? URI is uniform. Resource identifier L in the URL L is locator. Now what happens here is that you have a client and you have a server. And I'm simplifying it, there are a lot of variations possible, but generally you put up your document on the server. In the simplest form, the document will be HTML. And the client would make a call. Get, get me the document. And get the link. Get the document. And the docu simplest case again would be give you the HTML document. And the client is the client as a computer has a program that renders this document. And that program is called browser. Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, these are all the browsers. The first uh, browser that I had chance to use was in 1993. 
and that browser was Mozilla. In fact, one of the first search engines we were, we'll, uh, we started building a search engine in 1994. <coughs> a project called was Info Harness. Unfortunately, I used to work at a company called uh, Bellcore, now then called Telcordia, which used to be one of the baby Bell research arm, Bell Labs. And I could not convince my bosses, especially those business types, those managing MBAs, that there is something called internet market. So they only, uh, the product that we came, they, they um, only sold to the telco market for getting the documents, the searchable documents, rather than an internet market. So in those days, companies like Exai, Alta Vista, Yahoo, they came about. Anyway, so we, uh, so one of the milestones was this Mozilla browser, which was one of the most, I think, first <coughs> browser that was somewhat useful. Then came Netscape. So there's guys at UIUC, they, uh, CSA rather, they formed a company, Mark Anderson and Clark, and they created Nescape Browser. And then things moved on. National Center for Super Computing Education. I had a chance to um, uh, give an invited talk at Sun. What is Sun? So C E R N Sun. I'm sorry. So Sun is and where team honestly what? When the worldwide web that that is where he submitted his proposal on worldwide web and developing. Because we are in worldwide web and many other reasons um, I know team fairly reasonably well and we are connected on Facebook and other, other ways. But, um, and several of my students, some of my students were in there, my team also, because you know, we go to worldwide web related meetings and we can make videos. But wonderful guy, uh, one, of the, one of the most important things is that this guy, uh, it was very clear by 94 or 95, all the corporations had to put their websites and it was very clear that it would be a huge commercial success. However, uh, he steadfastly it never took a uh, commercial job. He stood for the openness of the web. He uh, fought against any of those licensing and patenting of the uh, web things, and that's why web is open as much as it is, even though there's big problems now and then that keep on coming. One of the big problems now is called apps. Right? What is apps? They, they use internet to download it on the internet, right? Yeah. But then they are closed. <coughs> From apps, you can't go to other web page. So one of the most recent talk that King gave, just last month, was on web apps. You said, basically, you have a that don't develop apps, develop web apps. It can look and behave just like apps, except that it will be open and it will be able to make, make it, it no, web can run in browser, common browser. So, for example, Financial Times, instead of making an app, it made a web app. So they could have links to outside world. <laughs> now, um, what we are going to, um, all right, let's see. So, so you have a client, you have a server, you can see this. Syntax, and you'll have to start looking at that. See, here is the AHRF that I put in. So, this is syntax HTTP colon slash slash. Right? So this is where hypertext transfer protocol. And this is the location where you can find the text. Uh, sorry, the document. And then you enter. Now, a um, number of things that happen in the context of web. Uh, first of all, well, um, let's 
talk about, I'm going to change the topic completely and go with other very interesting things. Let me ask you this. So, um, in our courses title, we have Web Information System. We have Web Information System. The word information there is for the purpose. The document you get, say estimate document, it will be called data. It by itself has a syntax how it should be displayed. And then, then it has some sentences. It is a text document. What does it mean? What does that data convey? It's for you to interpret. So when you search Google or Bing or whatever, and get a document, you get data. You click on that link, the data shows up, the document shows up. If it's a video, the video will start playing. And, but what does it mean? Right? So it's just syntax. And there is structure. It has organized so that it looks pretty or what other things, or your eyes move. But what does it convey? So, people have developed this uh, hierarchy called data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. Data, raw building blocks, consists of text. But we started with text. By the way, what did Tim Berners-Lee what, what, what was the problem? That he wanted to solve when he um, uh, when he when he did the proposal for what was the problem? Was the problem? Yeah. Well, more connect a lot of computers and also be able to connect all a bunch of different so the, different kinds of protocols, writing system between did use different so we had to create a set of rules for them all to connect together and they'd be able to share information without causing problems. I think I'm out of it. It is very broad level, yes, but that's not what I'm after. What I'm after is. Why, how did he say to son that give me resources, allow me to work, uh, you know, on developing software? What is the problem he was trying to solve initially for any business? Well, think of that as an organizational business and you want to invest resources. You are, you have to solve some problem, why that investment is worth it, right? What is the problem that he was trying to solve? All this thing came later, this interpretation we can give to what he said. Yes. There were a lot of flash projects going on in CERN at that time and uh, people had problems keeping track of information of those large projects, so that was the problem. What are the projects on? What does CERN do? High energy physics. Right. So, CERN is about, high, you know, high, so they have these colliders. You heard of this, you know, recently there was news recently about the God particle. This is where the sun is. So uh, it's impressive. I was there in one of those, um, you know, huge magnetic, uh, you know, this thing that goes around and it goes from uh, Switzerland to France. Uh, you know, majority is in France and Switzerland. And so, um, um, but the point is that scientists create a lot of data, but sharing the data was very hard. You had all these computers, Unix computers. You can attach, put the data in the email file. Even the issues of attachment was not that refined in those days. Attachment has a type, something called mind types. Right? You might have heard of that. So then, um, this particular uh, uh, data that somebody's created is very hard to share to people in the world wide web. And uh, I remember. My first job was at, um, I graduated in 1985. My first job was at Honeywell. Mm -hmm. Honeywell in those days was in um, uh, computer business also. So, Univac computers, these are, you know, old time uh, you know, mainframe computers. And when I graduated, um, uh, the most modern thing was mini computers. We didn't still have the 
uh, microcomputers or you know, what you see in the desktop or mobile laptop. So on those mini computers, the idea was that we had to connect the two mini computers so they can talk to each other through TCP IP or something like that. You physically connect the wires and, and, and then go down all the way to this network architecture so the network class. But the point here is that um, one computer did not talk to each other computer very well. So if your computer by IBM and a computer by uh, uh, DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation those days, or or, or like Cray computer or whatever, they didn't talk to each other very well. And you have to go to the data encoding level and all that kind of stuff and write the programs and stuff. So the point was, um, and there was nothing like an application running on this computer program, the computer can render the data that can be seen on the computer. There was nothing like that. So the point was, the, the initial pain point was that they wanted the physicists who have experimental data results to publish it so others look at it and not have to repeat the experiments or they can validate the experiments and so on and so forth, right? So data sharing was the problem. And so he said, well, can't I put all the data on this computer, but everybody can, everybody <coughs> else can, regardless of the type of computer they have, be able to see that data. That was the problem he was trying to solve. So the point here was that he was able to, he, 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 if you put the data in HTML, any computer in any make and manufacture, any operating system, you have this browser, it can display that. Right, those platform languages. The latter. The, he was he was a contractor. So so he was working there already on other things, and he saw the need. Uh, <coughs> uh, he said, "Well, you know, client server. The concept client server was already there. But what again he saw is, well, I will take this idea from this GML and make HTML, and even more than HTML, the important thing was HTTP. Simple thing that I will write a server." that will understand this hypertext structure protocol, understand the command get, and give you the document. So original, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 proposal here is still online. I think I will give you the link, and it is available from the links that I have shared. Now, coming back to our discussion, though, um, as the time went, the type of data change drastically. Today, on the internet, in the web, what kind of data is um, consuming at the at the you know, what, what is the highest traffic? Or the, where the biggest bandwidth is used up? Yes, yeah, that's one. And video. Basically media of all kinds of media of all media of all kinds, that's true. But video is a humongous thing, right? Because people, some of you guys, uh, uh, may wish to chuck uh, the um, cable and get all your content online, right? You are starting to do that. And consider the file size for a video right? compared to a text file. Okay. Few megabytes, these are is multi gigabyte. More raw content is 720p. I've written paper, I've written 20 page papers that are a couple of gigabytes and just 10 minutes of video. Right, exactly. Yes. And, you, and many of you have watched movies, right, online. So, uh, starting with text, and then make this game images, audio game. Technologies for display that thing. So I remember, so actually it's interesting, the company I started um, was uh, in 1999, the second company I'm talking about. The first company was a workflow company, but the second company was um, uh, 1999. The name of the company was Tali, and Tali meant uh, applause. And uh, applause, you, you applauded two hands. In this case, one hand was digital media, and another hand was broadband. In those days, broadband was just coming up. So I started the company thinking that people would want to search a lot of audio video content. So actually, my company developed 
uh, probably first of all in the search engine. Right. right. Now, but it's too early. <laughs> Way too early. Yeah, so, so I have a history of doing that. <laughs> But hey, I developed a job, I created jobs, and the, all the jobs were preserved, the companies acquired, and, and I, didn't, I didn't become very rich, but all, you know, five, five people I hired, my uh, first employee I hired is still working there. The Tali became Vocat, became Simagis, became Fortin, became Activize, became, you know, so, so it got through series of acquisition and, uh, you know, things, people got acquired, and the technology got acquired, and we got applied, and still, Deployed the technology we developed um, in those days is still deployed at the uh, majority of world's largest bank. So not in the form that I initially conceived, but we before I left the com company, uh, <coughs> we already had these uh, uh, products for uh, uh, financial services market, uh, and that is still uh, you know in, in deployed at majority of banks like Citibank, like uh, Barclays, and such. But uh, that's some other time. So coming back to those, you think about data. The, the variety of data is kept on changing. But uh, what you are after, most of the people, what you are after is information. So we can say what we, here is just one of many things. <coughs> application of structure of our data in attempt to communicate the meaning. Attempt to communicate from data. You know, what does it mean to that? What does it convey? So you read a piece of text. You, don't, you, you read that Wikipedia article and you gain some information. In the process of getting the information, you might, from information, you learn knowledge, or in the process of converting data into information, you apply your knowledge. For example, you may say, oh, I know some knowledge about addressing. Oh, so file has, the file has a file address. On Unix also, I have to give file address. Okay, that is, now in the case of address on the web, it will be this http <laughs> slash ui or url. So you may apply the knowledge that they have. You have to refer to data in a chunk called file with an address, that knowledge you may apply to understand, oh, okay, in, in the case of uh, web, the address is like this. That is application of knowledge. But you may also gain, now you also gain from that, that there is one more form of addressing. The form of addressing on the web is uh, that, um, uh, you know, uh, is this HTTP uh, URI. So, the data is the text you see, the information is the fact that this is an address, and the knowledge is the fact that, hey, this is how it works on the web. This is how you get it, data, right, from the web. So, that's where the knowledge comes. And the wisdom is about judgment. Wisdom may be about Hmm, this is an idea. If I can get out there, maybe I can make money. Yes. So our data would be like we're knowing random facts, information, we'll be able to understand those facts. And all to be able to utilize that understanding. Wisdom would be actually be able to fully understand it. Basically, it's basically it's basically about the understanding. The wisdom would lead to, uh, you know, is about, um, you know, something like you form a rule, you form experience base, something saying, this kind of stuff works, or, or here's how I should deal with other people. The, if the person is hard to deal with this watch, I will do. Those kind of learning you get will take you to wisdom. It will say, I have, uh, I I think my personality is such that I would not survive in a small company. Sorry. Then, the uh, thing that I would also suggest you do is to just uh, search for data, information, knowledge, and wisdom, and you'll get a whole bunch of uh, uh, results. And uh, 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 those results will, uh, let's see. 
So by the way, uh, uh, you'll have a link to my scratch pad. The scratch pad would have two things that I would want to, um, you know, you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, check out. Uh, I may not go through all of them. So here's another picture of, you know, data, uh, connectedness, and uh, understanding. And then here you have, uh, you know, understanding relations, understanding patterns, understanding principles. That's another take on the same thing. But coming back to the fact, uh, you know, our global discussion, not the types of data came about. And that when you are building a search engine, it's a vehicle for you to get information. It is not information that you're getting, but you're getting data, but it's a vehicle for you to get information. So applications that replace the data to help you get the meaning of the data, to help you decision, make decisions. That is where the information comes in. And what we are about in this class is not about just the data, <coughs> and not just about how do I syntactically transfer the data, and not just about the technology, but more also about applications. So when you are going to do class projects, for example, when you do your major project, the project will be more about building what I would call a, a, a information systems or web information systems. An information system or that it utilizes web technology. So yes, to be able to do that, we do need to know web technology, but you need to be able to apply that. And in that context, what we discussed about is the information system. In fact, ideally speaking, this class uh, should be taken after a class called web programming. Unfortunately, our uh, university, uh, as with many other universities actually, it does, uh, uh, you know, academia sometimes changes too late, uh, too, too slowly. Um, and, um, you know, web is such an important thing. If you think about today, different areas of computer science, artificial intelligence, uh, databases, uh, uh, information retrieval, uh, algorithms, these are some of the core areas of computer science. Worldwide web is one of the most important ones and probably where the most money lies. And probably where the most new job creations. So we should be teaching a lot about that because that's where the jobs are, the government is. And uh, I've been advocating that we teach the words uh, web programming. I think we will start doing so now. But unfortunately, most of you have not had that opportunity. So it kind of comes upon us in this class to kind of give you an introduction and for you to pick up something very quickly. So that's what we're going to do early in the classes. Now, um, this is very similar to all those uh, things uh, about uh, data information and research and things like that. Let me uh, get to my last equation. So let's go to this page. This is a wonderful site called www.schools.com where you have, in the, you see here right there I'm looking at the web primer. So some of these concepts that I mentioned right there, there's some overview of that. But what would happen here is that you'll find that there will be a whole bunch of stuff. You see, you can see some of these things. Let's see more right there. Let's look at some of these things that we cover. So the core thing about creating the country <coughs> and CSS statuses is about how do you kind of have sort of uniform content across multiple pages? And that tutorials for that. As we just briefly talk, we have client side and a server side. So there is 
Where we need a software that's on the client side, and where we need a software that is on the server side. In a very simplistic way, you have this data coming on the client side. In some of the cases, <coughs> first of all, you need to have a lot of different ways to deliver the data. And so there are all this kind of stuff called PHP, ASP, and so on and so forth. And uh, Java server page and many other technologies are there on the server side. Of how do you package the content? How do you deliver that? When somebody asks for a link, here are what is one of the important things that happen. Web started initially as delivering a, a static content. But think about uh, asking on the web today's stock prices. Well, obviously, it is not yesterday's stock price. So the data changes, right, every day. And you're not going to create new files every day with the new stock values. That is all old way of doing it. That's how it costs people to it, but that's pretty inefficient. So instead, what you have is dynamic websites. What, well, how do you get dynamic websites? Well, you actually have a database. Wasn't that like the late 90s before she pulled technology? There were a lot of essentially web applications. It was even in the mid 90s, actually. Nice. But uh, it started in the mid 90s, but you are right, late 90s is the, uh, it's where it really exploded. Or like uh, the RSS feeds now, where you can essentially connect to a specific machine for a specific bit of information. And it's constantly delivered to you. Because I remember there was several applications to do exactly that. Right, but before, before, even before the RSS, I think people started, there was been uh, cases where essentially you saw the content that is in the database. So what you are sending as your um, you know, web from the client, what you get is a query. If a query might offer a syntax or URL, <coughs> something, question mark, Q question mark equal to and something. So then that something is the keyword that is given to a database to run a query, which may be a SQL query, a SQL query, which gives the data. But then that data has to be packaged and sent. Very often that data may be packaged and sent in XML. So the link Lingua Franca, a standard for representing data, the core standard for representing data exchange, data exchange on the web, became XML. So we started with HTML, but HTML is appropriate for rendering content for human consumption. Very often, what happened was that. In this process, many, many of the data that got exchanged on the web was not consumed by any human, uh, human. It went through many intermediate steps, where it was in intermediate steps consumed by other programs. And HTML is a very poor and limited way of transferring data, structured data, or semi-structured data. It has some of structure. So this XML is also tag value format, but that became um, so, in fact, while in 1991, 2, 3, 4, much of the data was transferred as HTML, starting mid-90s uh, and uh, 96, 7, 8, majority of data uh, got you know, exchanged on the web using XML. One very good example. Here's a simple example. AP News. AP News, which creates stories. Well, what happens when the story is created? There's a reporter on the, uh, you know, on the on, on the field. There's a photographer associated with the reporter and such. They create the content. The content somehow makes its way into the news, uh, into the AP wire services. It is further editorialized. <coughs> Very special data is put into that. And then it is sent uh, for uh, some people to use. But it should be used by only people who have subscribed, paid. AP is a business, it wants to get paid. So it has subscribers. So there's a subscription model. And there are some companies, let's say yahoo.com, shows news. 
Well, that news is, is to be subscribed from AP News and other sources, Reuters and other things. So they are content aggregators, they come to these content distributors, and then somewhere on the end, after some more steps, is where the news.yahoo.com news or news.google.com news show up. That used to be earlier, but but then the uh, news industry, also, you know, uh, adopted a standard called um, uh, news markup language, uh, NGM language. But that is based on XML. So XML become the base way for all the data to exchange until it was ready to be displayed. Even even then, when it came ready to be displayed. What came was these browser sites software, which are perfectly able to take XML content and create, uh, you know, nice rendering on the web page. Right? So, in the process, what we see here is that you have ecosystem of server side software, which actually one of the very important thing that happened, another very interesting thing happened. In the earlier days, in the client server days, it was a big pain to connect to a server which had a program running and to render the uh, data on the client. And you have the you know Java, for example, which you machine, and you had the Java base, uh, you know, uh, uh, rendering you know uh, display of content came that came from server and such, and you had applet, right? That went away because that mean, meant you had to download the program before you can process that for data coming from the server, and you had to, you know, a lot of, you know, there were a lot of challenges. I won't go into all that. Yes. Uh, PRML, I remember the uh, was it virtual reality markup language was somewhere in there to render things in 3D yes. without having to download a Java applet or something. Right. So that is the evolution of HTML kind of stuff. For the virtual you know, 3D kind of thing, yes. But uh, uh, so so, but 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 we did, but that applet model didn't work too well. I mean, for why? That was the main main way actually. We do the parent server stuff. And here now, what has happened is that one of the most important thing that happened with the web is that it became possible to take your arbitrary software application and to wrap it as a server side program <coughs> and make it talk. Uh, you know, make, make, make it a, uh, a, a member of the web community. So that people from outside, from any browser came in and were able to invoke an application that was on the client side. But for that, we needed more technologies that essentially created a bunch of server side technologies. And of course, there are things Microsoft wanted to do in its own way, so that came about, and they wanted to use C, and C, you know, C Sharp, and Visual Basic and C Sharp, and so there is a general thing versus words that came from Unix world much more. And then on this other side, uh, the server client side, there were a lot of stuff. You know, at Facebook, what is the uh, person, highest paid person, what is his specialty? High speed programmer person. JavaScript. JavaScript is, on one hand, simple, and on the other hand, extremely challenging if you want to do the kind of stuff that you know. The page, page, you go down and the page dynamically builds bottom. Or the things go up and you can show the conversation on the side. And this is a lot of code, and a lot of challenging code. And then you know that code has to work on all the browsers. It's JavaScript. It's JavaScript. Majority of the visual code for the end user stuff in, let's say, you are using Google Plus or any of these social, you know, social networking sites, a lot of this is asked. And you know how these people are found? There is a startup that goes and analyzes uh, GitHub to recommend to a company where they can find the best programs. 
Sajirudha. Idea for new company, right? But anyway, so what we have to do here is that we have to uh, go through these very basic things. We have to have something on browser and server, and XML is extremely critical. Within the XML, there is certain thing called uh, web services, you know, which allows you to wrap a software to uh, application program and provide the data and exchange typically in XML. Although there is uh, there are two types of web services: standard and enterprise web services based on SOAP and Visual and Eclipse yeah, is called REST one service. So that is that. So these are some of the um, more piece of things that we have to know about and that's why we have a bunch of classes. So let us look at our class uh, page. So this is the class page. I have to figure out a way uh, for me to, uh, you know, discuss this whole page. So, So we are going to go into HTML, CSS, XML, language and parsing. So when you get XML, you can pass that. <laughs> XML query, <laughs> server side programming, client side programming, <coughs> getting data from multiple sources and mashing it up. So you have Google Map, in the Google Map you have these dots that come up. And dots come up from a database query. Saying at this location there is a house for sale. So there's a map, and then you're getting the data from a database, realtor.com or whatever, and it shows the house for sale for this price. And you combine all these on the front end, that's called mashup, bring things together. <coughs> so that is mashup. Right. Then we get into a whole variety of challenging things. So let me show you this. So that would be our technology, and we'll be done with that. And along with the technology, everything, there will be exercises. Important note about exercises. Uh, academic honesty, extremely important. But there is a slight variation, or at least let me give you a clarification of what academic honesty means here. All the coding that you represent to be yours must be done by you. But there is not a problem in your going to bed and looking up any other code. There is not a problem in asking any of your team members or any of your colleagues to explain you anything. So as far as explanation or um, um, examples go, you can take all that. But the specific code that you have done, that you have written, that you are saying, submitting as an assignment, result must be lost. And you must be able to explain it hundred percent. So I may call you and say, explain me. I don't know if it's sense of uh, who says very good way to do that. And so be sure that you do that. There are other important things uh, about uh, if you are writing a report and uh, there is something exact text, make sure you use a quote, give a citation. Those are the normal things you must do. And people, uh, and there are some challenges. People come from different culture here. In some cases, there are liberal interpretation. Yeah. Make sure the US here, we have a secure interpretation of academic policy. So your work, you must be yours, you must be yours. But again, in team, we talk to other, give reference, give articles, look up for tutorials, all that is fine. Right? Uh, maybe even sometimes debugging help to take that. It was a first thing. What's happening in the election today? So these are some of the main things 
that were talked about in the context of election yesterday. <coughs> and what were the important things day before yesterday? Uh, 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 you know, two days before that. Well, there were different things. There was a birthday joke that uh, you won the candidate team. Or there were taxation issues that came up. Or there's something about energy plan of uh, you know one again came. So there are different issues on different days. It tells you that. For any particular issues, suppose tax returns, it shows you the tweets that talks about tax returns. It shows you news articles about tax returns, discussion. It shows you Wikipedia article that talks about uh, probably discussing tax returns. It shows you <coughs> what is what we are talking about right now as you speak on the election topic. This is what we are talking about right now as you speak. And tomorrow you'll find out or today you can find out what why, why, what what is this exact word? What is being talked about? Very interesting. And this is fair and truthful thing comes up. And that democratic city is being discussed in convention in Tampa, shows up, right? That's what is being talked about now. Yeah, somebody here from some place in the world, in Asusi, in, I don't know, some Middle East is talking about US election. You can see that. And he is sharing this particular article. issues of civil rights, how do the candidates combine, you know, thing on the issue of energy and environment, social issues, how do they combine, who has more positive, who has more negative views. You see women issue, for example, you can see the fact, this is positive, these are negative comments. This is Romney, this is Obama. Right? So, this is just an example. I, I can just go on. This is a very extensive system. It shows you, I can change this thing here to, uh, uh, let's say, Occupy Wall Street. And then I can show you on the networks how, how well people how well people communicate in, in track. So here is a uh, so uh, in Chicago, these are the people in Chicago, and see how they how how connected they are. They're not connected there, but you you can look at uh, people in LA. How well connected they are. And then it shows you, I can see, who is this guy? Who is, he's kind of holding a lot of people together. That is the guy. Right. So the point here is though, coming back to our class thing, we are going to introduce to you a bunch of projects. This duties is what I just showed you. Videos. So these are examples of web information systems. These are very large systems. These are funded systems. There are a lot of um, um, uh, people working on it. We will show you what goes into that and we will say, hey, these technologies that we learn, how they go in. But this is also time that when you will start um, asking questions about what projects you are doing. And define that. Now we will walk into that. Any questions at this point? Gracias.